iPhone 11 not turning on after an overcharge, it's completely dead. We have this exact device in our workshop, an iPhone 11 that won't charge. As we can see on the Power Z, the device is not drawing any current. Hello everyone, I'm Adriana and in today's tutorial with Leonardo we are going to learn together how to provide an effective solution for any iPhone experiencing charging issues. Today's case is the perfect example. The first step in our repair route is to remove the two screws located at the bottom of the device. Then, with the help of the plastic pick, we carefully remove the screen. My focus here is not to spend too much time on steps that are relatively simple in the repair process, leaving more time and concentration for those steps that are of greater importance. Now we go on the next step, which requires us to remove all the screws from the device top shield. Before removing any connectors from the motherboard, it's very important to ensure that the battery connector has been disconnected. This is a crucial step to avoid any possible damage to the motherboard. If the device still doesn't turn on, what we do is to use a tester to measure continuity of the battery connector. In this way, we start searching for any short circuit that may exist at the battery connector. As you can see in our case, we detected a short circuit at the battery connector. We continue our diagnosis with the help of the laboratory power supply. By doing so, we confirm that we indeed have a short circuit. Speeding things up a bit, we proceed to use the fast camera to show you how to disconnect all the connectors from the motherboard. Finally, we are in a position to remove the motherboard. This is a step that requires caution to avoid damaging any components. Here we can notice that the motherboard has not been tampered with before. This means that the two motherboards have not been separated before. It's crucial for us to work with motherboards that have been tampered with, maintaining their integrity. The next step in our repair involves removing the foam protection from the motherboard. In this way, we ensure that our keep in optimal condition. Now we go to the microscope for a thorough visual inspection. This step is of great importance in the entire repair process as it allows us to detect possible damage to the motherboard. A good microscope is essential for this type of work. If you are starting in mobile repair, you need to have some key tools like a laboratory power supply, a soldering station, an air station and of course a good microscope. Afterwards, tweezers and other suppliers are more affordable. I leave links in the video description so you can acquire all tools that we've equipped our lab with. In this long journey of device repair, you start basic and gradually advance. To generate income, it's necessary to invest, especially in quality tools. If you don't, you might fail behind. 
Remember, tool doesn't need to be acquired all at once. You can buy them little by little as you progress and gain more experience. Nowadays we have tools with which we can separate all iPhone motherboards from the iPhone 10 model to iPhone 14. In our workshop we've got several motherboard separate machines for this purpose. Starting from 220 Celsius degrees, we can begin to attempt to separate the motherboards. In all our tutorials, we share this advice. To avoid damaging the motherboard's pads, you have to have a gentle hand and remove the motherboard gradually without applying too much force. It's like handling a newborn baby in your hands. You can also opt to wear gloves as the motherboard can reach temperatures of up to 180 Celsius degrees, which can be quite hot. At this step, we are going to cool down the motherboard using a computer fan. It's a very economical option and I leave your purchase link in the description of this video. To remove the motherboard, I use the sharp type of the scalpel. We now return to the microscope to analyze the pads. In this way, we can verify that all the pads are in a good condition. Repairing this specific issue can cost between 100 and 150 euros depending on where we take it. These repairs require a bit of experience and some specific tools. If you are from Spain and if you have issues with the motherboard of any iPhone, I leave you a pickup link with Corellus Express here above on the screen. We work throughout the national territory. Now we continue with our tutorial, as you can observe all the pads are intact. At this step we are going to identify if the short circle persists on side A or side B of the motherboard. As you can see, the short circle persists after separating the motherboards, indicating the fault is on the side A. This is the most efficient and easy way to identify where the problem lies. Separate the motherboards and search with the help of the tester for short circuits on the motherboard. Most commonly we have issues only on, on one board. Now we turn to the thermal camera to find hot spots on the board. We inject current into the board and we wait. I've put in 4 volts and 3 amperes. If you pay close attention to the image, you can see a small pulse on the tiny component right in the center of the motherboard.
Then we go to the schematic emulator to see exactly which area is heating up. And is right here in this part is practically this capacitor that's on the VDD main line. If you don't have a thermal camera, don't worry. Nowadays there are many economical tricks to find short circuits on the motherboard. The only difference is that it takes a little bit more time to find them. But if you are a beginner, you are likely not to have a high volume of work, so you'll have plenty of time. Once we find the short circuit line, we solder a wire and inject current. If you don't have much experience, you can input the voltage and amperage of the line. You have it in the schematic diagram, I'll show you several tricks on this topic later on. If you like this type of content, don't forget the like button and subscribe to our channel. Take advantage of this offer because it's totally for free. Below in the description I leave you the purchase link for Razon, you just have to use the type of the soldering iron and spread it over the area. Once you have it all covered, input current with the help of the laboratory power supply right at the wire solder into the motherboard. As you can see, we've discovered the capacitor that was short circuit. In the next step, we clean the motherboard, apply a little bit of flux and remove the burnt capacitor. If you don't want to take risks by applying heat, then we have to remove it with the tip of the scalpel. Once the capacitor is removed, we check with the tester in continuity mode the two pads. One should beep to ground and the other should not. After removing the short circuit, we are going to solder a new capacitor. Here we have the motherboard, let's check the side A. We connect the screen and with the help of the laboratory power supply, we turn on our device. We can see that the device finally turns on perfectly. The last step involves joining the two motherboards. We have to join side A and side B. For this process we use the same tool. It's very important to apply flux all around. 
As I promised in other tutorials for joining the two motherboards, I won't do reballing. I've preserved the same solder and applying high quality flux. In this way, we managed to maintain the original Apple soldering. However, it's crucial to separate the motherboards correctly and not have balls joined together. When the board emits white smoke, then the solder has melt and we can turn off the machine. Finally, we cool down the motherboard using a fan. To not prolong this video, we won't delay with the assembly process. We turn on our device and we look at the consumption. We can see a consumption of 1 Amperian and 300, which indicates a good charge. I hope you like this video. I'm Adriana, he's Leonardo and we'll see you in the next one. Bye bye!